This is a picture of Jesus I'm not finished with. This is very detailed. Woodhill Homes resident Daquan Jackson is an aspiring artist. I'm a passionate artist. I draw by how I feel. It's been a natural talent of mine. He sketches in a well-worn notebook he keeps by his side. And while he admits most of his inspiration comes from looking at a screen, he also appreciates the art available around him at Woodhill. There's a few really old paintings in the hallways of the, some of the buildings here. They're just all great to look at. So you get a lot of history here. And as it turns out, these murals have a long fabled history. The Works Progress Administration was long to employ able people from relief rooms. When Woodhill Homes was built in the late 1930s, the federal government was practically raining public art down on the nation. Over a few years, it spent $35 million, more than half a billion dollars in today's money, on the Federal Art Project, one of the programs of the Works Progress Administration. The WPA employed people who were out of work during the Great Depression to do all kinds of things, like constructing public buildings, bridges, and roads. And for the art division of the program, the government paid about 10,000 artists to make hundreds of thousands of murals, paintings, and sculptures. These reproductions of the American scene of today will make this one of the most fertile periods of our country's art. Some of this work is done on canvas, but much of it is created on the walls of our schools, libraries, and other public buildings in the form of mural paintings. A lot of WPA pieces show ordinary people in an extraordinary light, larger-than-life postal workers dutifully delivering mail railroad workers raising hammers in a triumphant expression of the power of work. Walk around Woodhill Homes and you'll see WPA art everywhere. A panel on a building shows a mother holding a baby. And in the community center gym, WPA murals cover the walls, showing scenes of everyday life. To me, it depicts uh, what was going on in the community at that time. Woodhill resident Marilyn Burns spends a lot of time here. We see factory workers, we see architects. I see that over there in the corner. I also see in the background apartment buildings. Burns says one day she got to talking with some other neighbors. And it was concerning the pieces that were in the gym. And people were concerned, well, yeah, that's okay, but what era was that? And uh, we don't have people of color. That didn't make sense, she says, in a neighborhood that's predominantly African-American. This is now 2019, so we need to say from then to now, because it's become more diverse, and we want art depicting these times right now. The fact that all or most of the people in the paintings are white has to do with Woodhill's history. When it first opened, almost everyone who lived here was white. Now, all but eight of the 916 residents are African-American. Burns says residents don't want to replace or change the old art. But to add to it, we want to see something that's representative of our community. The question of how to do that, how to make a community's art look more like the people who live there, is one public housing estates are confronting across the nation. A few years ago, a New York City councilman gave half a million dollars to a program where youth at five different public housing developments painted murals about their lives. At another development in Cleveland, Riverview on West 25th Street in Ohio City, an artist is wrapping the outside of the community center with photographs of people who live nearby. At Woodhill, though, the next step forward is a party funded by a small local grant. It happens on a bright Friday afternoon on the lawn in front of the community center. People gather around a big rectangular black board laid out on the grass. Myra Simmons, who lives in the neighborhood nearby, dips her hand into a dish of neon green paint. Then she presses her palm to the board. Her handprint joins dozens of others in bright pinks Beautiful. and blues. How did it feel? I felt like I was a part of something. When the board dries, it'll be installed as a mural inside the community center, just yards away from the old murals in the gym. Adding to the stories the original WPA art tells is completely in keeping with the original intent of the Federal Art Project, says Nina Silber, a history professor at Boston University. The basic message was to kind of capture this sense of the strengths, the wisdom of ordinary people who lived in a place. 
For now though, efforts to install new art at places like Woodhill will probably remain community driven and locally funded. The WPA ended in 1943 as unemployment went way down during World War II. Today, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development says it doesn't fund art projects at public housing estates. And for the past three years, the Trump administration has called for completely eliminating the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Endowment for the Humanities, the two programs that some regard as descendants of the federal art project.